The Sharp Edge on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Mazic Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Sharp Edge. I'm down in Embro, Ontario today, joined by Greg Stewart of Mazix. Greg, how's it going? Bern, how are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Hey, we're going to do a little different Sharp Edge this time. Typically, we talk machinery, we talk technology. You right. know, I want to talk sharp agronomy today. Ah, yeah, sharp, sharp agronomy. agronomy. And you've just had your great Ontario yield tour, and you've come up with some pretty large numbers, 191. I want to talk about that number, and I want to talk about sharp agronomy, things growers are doing to hit that number. Yeah, yeah. So we've got a real nice set of plots to stand in front of here today. Uh, Nathan and Albert Rankema are dealers just outside of Embro. So we're, we're happy to be here and happy to talk about yield tour. So you nailed it, 191 and a half bushels per acre. So that's just not nudging the record, that's blowing right past the record yield. So that's a big number. And what you can learn from the yield tour, so what are the components that go into making that yield tour prediction? So the first one is ear count. So we're at 30,500 ears per acre. Now we're talking ears per acre, not plants not per plants. acre, right? That's a, that's a critical difference. Then of course we measure the rows around, the girth of the cob. Again, big number this year at 16.9 rows around. That's as big as number we've seen in all the years we've been doing the yield tour, right? And then of course we measure length, right? And we are 34.5 on, uh, on length. So all of those numbers are nearly the top of what we've ever seen in the yield tour, right? 30,500 ears, big rows around, pretty good length, all adds up to this 191 and a half bushels per acre, right? The, the intriguing thing when you look at those numbers, burn is that when you come stumbling out of a cornfield, right, and you tell the producer he's got an ear count of 29,500, because remember, 30,500 is the average mm -hmm. So about, obviously, half of the fields didn't even get to 30,500, right? So you come stumbling out of a cornfield and you tell the grower he's got an ear count of 29,500 and he goes, well, what's going on? I planted 33,500, right? And that's really where the learning starts and where I think the yield tour can be improved, what we call at Mazex the enhanced yield tour or yield tour 2.0, where we talk, well, what is your seed drop, right? And let's just say, for argument's sake, the seed drop is 34.5. That'll be one seed every six inches. Then you come back in June and check your plant stand and see where that 34.5 has gone. And let's just, for benchmark purposes, let's say he's dropped and we're now at 33.5, right? Okay, so that's a June plant stand. Now, you really start to improve the learning when you come back to that same spot in the field and do ear count. You know what you dropped in seed, you know what you had in June, now come back in August at yield tour time and count solid ears. And let's say, I don't know, 32.5. Nothing magical, right? These would be, these would be fairly difficult to reach like this is this is going to take a really good farmer and a really good bag of seed working together to give you those sort of numbers but compared to our yield tour average of 30,500 there's probably I don't know 10 bushel sitting on the table because of low ear count that most growers could get if they just improve their agronomy skills, sharpen them up ah. just a little bit. Hey, I want to head into this crop right now. You've got some really neat things to show growers about how they can sharpen their agronomy. Right on. So Greg, we're inside the plot and you mentioned the ear count was so important this year. You had that 30,500 average. How do growers get there and beyond? Yeah, yeah. So the key, I guess, Byrne, is to first, you got to get into the field and, uh, and, and have a look at what that stand looks like. And so you can see in this row where we've got a really nice ear count. I'm about 33,000 ears per acre in this section right down this row. And if I walk down that row, whether I'm measuring 17 feet, five inches, or in the yield tour, we actually pull a rope that's 30 feet long, but you walk down that row and you're looking for problems, right? Because you're counting ears, but when you're counting ears, 
you say, oh, don't even have a plant there, right? Miss that, what happened, right? Or you find a plant that's there but has no ear on it. And so you say, okay, that, that, that may not have been the planter's fault because the seed was dropped, but was it dropped at the right depth or was there other problems that it emerged? Maybe it emerged too late and has a, has a poor uh, diameter to the, to the stock and no ear on it. So that's, that's really the fun of the yield tour is getting in and assessing your stands for ear count and looking for the holes in the ear count, whether it's a missing plant altogether or a poor plant that doesn't have an ear on it. So Greg, let's cut to the chase. What's the number one problem from, from an ear count perspective when you're talking about seed drop? Right. Well, Bern, unfortunately, I promised my Mazex team that I would not talk about planting depth anymore because we have beat planting depth, you know, to death. We've talked about it for every winter for the last three winters. Unfortunately, this year, when we go out and do our enhanced yield tour and we look at seed drop stand in June and then plant stand or ear count in August, and then we talk and we dig and we look, dang, too shallow especially when we moved into that drier part of the planting. The first 10 days of May, you couldn't hardly screw up. But the, the 10th to the 20th of May, when things started to dry out quite rapidly this year, if you didn't move your planting depth down, that became sort of one of the number one reasons where your ear count was not where you wanted it is because you had seeds that were late because they weren't late to emerge because they weren't into moisture. I write the planting depth story every year. You talk about it every year. Yep. Where do we go from here? What's the answer on planting depth? Yeah, so I have one uh, little moment of discovery this year, which is driven by the monitors. So the monitors are brilliant things, you know, sitting up in the cab, give you all sorts of information, right? And when everything's working good, there's lots of green boxes, green for singulation, 99.9 .9 this, 99.9 .9 that. You can't help but feel you should just drive on. But the most critical idea of behind planter success would be whether or not the seeds are actually well placed into moisture, right? And so green to me should be a signal to get off the tractor and check that your planting depth is right. In, in all of our Mazex work burn, the other thing that has come out is that although we're not really promoting three inch planting depth, we did all those trials of two inch versus three inch. What growers should not be afraid of is to go just a little bit deeper, right? Because our data is really supportive that you can inch down from two to two and a quarter to two and a half, and the risk is very low compared to being on the shallow side. So Greg, growers have listened to you. They've gotten out of the cab. They're down on the ground. They're looking into the seed trench. What lessons do you have for them? Yeah, thanks, Bernd. So uh, not rocket science here, but one observation that I've had over the years is that we get misguided a little bit in terms of how deep the seed is simply by the way the planter makes that, most planters make that sort of ridge over top of the seed. So I've tried to uh, mimic planting 2022 here for us, right, to get, a, to get an early start. And so you can imagine that there's a bit of a ridge where the, where the row unit has sort of piled up the, the soil a little bit. Number one is that you can't be misguided. And so, you know, something simple, like a little bit of wood in the tractor cab or with the planter, where you just lay that on there, right? And get rid of some of that bump up caused by the row unit. And then with that wood sitting there, then you can only throw the dirt one way. So scratch very carefully, but move in the dirt this way. And then you get a nice uh, option to say, okay, what is my true planting depth? If I've got sort of that firm there, and then I've carefully moved the soil just this one direction, and then I find the seed, and now I can do a pretty nice job of estimating to the bottom of the trench where I found the seed to where we are really in terms of a, a soil surface, right? And so, you know, where I've sort of mocked this up here, you know, I'm sort of inch and a half there. But, but simple things, you know, a piece of wood in the planter or in the toolbox that just allows you to smooth that top down, then move the soil only in one direction, find the seed, and then give, your, give yourself a decent chance to accurately measure really how deep you are. Awesome. Hey, Greg, uh, some great 
sharp agronomy tips on the sharp edge today. Thanks for stopping by. Hey, Byrne, thanks for coming.